Hi everybody, welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Sunday, January the 14th, 2024. I uh, can't believe we're almost uh, halfway through uh, the first month of this year. Uh, the year is shaping up to be quite interesting, quite interesting to say the least. Uh, I want to thank all of you for watching uh, this channel, for supporting the channel. Please subscribe. Uh, please like the videos, hit the thumbs up, uh, and also the bell notification. Uh, so when I uh, put new videos up, you are notified. Um, also, please, as we discuss every day, continue to share these videos with uh, your family, your friends, coworkers, and colleagues, uh, so we can continue to uh, move forward in our endeavor to educate people, uh, to wake people up, hopefully give people something uh, to think about uh, if they are uh, you know, having problems financially, uh, if they are caught in a rut, uh, maybe professionally or with their, their job, uh, if they are caught in a rut with their physical fitness uh, routine or their diet. Uh, these are all things that I try to cover on this channel. Maybe not every topic every day, depending on what's going on. Uh, but I'm trying to keep it as, as, as broad-based and well-rounded uh, with topics that, uh, that you know, I, do, I do know something about, obviously with regard to owning my own business, uh, being a professional for almost 30 years now, uh, with regard to the physical fitness aspect and my journey I sh I've been sharing with you on this channel. And economically, uh, you know, I do keep my, uh, my, my finger on what's going on with the non-mainstream, and mainstream, but also non-mainstream news sources to try to uh, capture things that are happening each and every day uh, to bring to you in the evenings uh, just so you can tuck it away and, uh, and, and, and add to your knowledge about what's happening and what's unfolding because it's going to continue to decline in my opinion. So I want to start out by uh, talking about a very unfortunate uh, event I saw uh, posted today about two Navy SEALs uh, that have uh, evidently gone missing off of the Somali coast. Uh, they said after a nighttime boarding mission. Uh, I saw something earlier this morning on this, and then Zero Hedge released something uh, midday today, so I'm using the Zero Hedge article. It says, there's been more bad news to come out of the already chaotic waters of the Middle East region. As over the weekend, it's been widely reported that two U.S. Navy SEALs have gone missing off the coast of Somalia in the Gulf of Aden. The missing SEALs, quote, fell into the water during a nighttime boarding mission on Thursday, according to U.S. military officials, with the incident only being disclosed this weekend after the search and rescue mission yielded, uh, had, excuse me, search and rescue mission had yielded uh, no results. Um, this is according to military statements printed in the Associated Press. A U.S. official who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss details that have not yet been made public told the Associated uh, Press the missing SEALs were on a mission not related to Operation Prosperity Guardian, uh, the U.S. international mission to provide protection to vessels in the Red Sea. It says the SEALs were on an interdiction mission, the official said, when one of them fell off a high, or excuse me, fell off a ship after high waves hit the vessel, prompting another SEAL to go after him to attempt a rescue. Uh, okay, you can use your own discretion on that. Do you believe that a Navy SEAL uh, simply uh, toppled off of a ship uh, from a wave? Uh, these guys go through, I mean, extreme grueling training. Uh, obviously, anything can happen. Uh, why was the information uh, not released? Uh, now it's three days later. It says the SEAL boat had reportedly been headed toward a suspicious vessel off the Somali coast when the elite operators went overboard. Uh, the Gulf of Aden, it says, has become dangerous for commercial vessels and tankers due to Somali piracy, which in the last couple of decades has remained a significant problem and danger. Um, it says the New York Times issued further details as follows. Navy ships and aircraft were immediately dispatched to the scene where search and rescue efforts have been underway, the official said. Listen to this. It says the military central command noted the rescue operations in a statement on Friday, but made no mention of the sailors being members of a SEAL team or any of the details of the incident. 
So it's given that the, and we talk about um, the threats that are occurring in these waters in this part of the world, says, given the bulk of diverted Red Sea, which we've discussed this issue also, is a lot of Red Sea traffic is now being diverted down around the coast of Africa due to the Houthi attacks uh, in that region. Uh, and now the recent conflict that's, that's, uh, that's been, let's say, uh, escalated with the uh, attacks in Yemen. Uh, it says, the bulk of diverted Red Sea traffic must now travel via the Cape of Good Hope around Africa due to ongoing Houthi attacks. This could result in an increase of maritime traffic near the Somali coast, leading to more opportunity and ample potential for threats um, of piracy. So I wanted to just uh, say, you know, mention that article uh, and let's let's keep these two uh, American heroes, these two Navy SEALs uh, and their families uh, in our prayers, uh, pray for them. Uh, and uh, what, whatever transpired down there, I would imagine we'll never get the full story. Uh, right now, the, the explanation is that uh, this Navy uh, SEAL simply fell off the ship and then his and then his. Uh, um, his team member jumped in uh, pursuant to Navy SEAL or just Navy protocol to, to help rescue him. And also something supposedly happened. So again, prayers uh, with uh, those, two, uh, those two heroes. Uh, the next article that I thought was uh, worthy of sharing with you today came out of the Business Insider. Uh, and it says, American consumers are feeling the pain of higher interest rates while Wall Street is... Uh, is having a ball, this one economist says. And it says American households are bearing the brunt, and that we talk about the disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street, meaning uh, what is happening in the stock market every day, the continued run up in the market, uh, while uh, mom and pop and average uh, citizens are struggling to buy food for their families, struggling to put gasoline in their, in their car, struggling to make their uh, auto payments and their auto insurance payment, payments, which is going up, and their homeowner's insurance payments, which are also skyrocketing. It says, American households are bearing the brunt of higher interest rates while financial firms are raking it in, according to economist Stephanie Pomboy. Last year, as they took rates from 4.5% to 5.5%, credit spreads narrowed and stocks rose 24%. Uh, this Stephanie Pomboy uh, says, who's the founder and president of boutique research firm Macro Mavens, um, says, even, quote, in other words, the markets eased even as the Fed tightened. Meanwhile, the tightening uh, that did take place was on consumers who got savaged by 23% credit card rates and 7.8% mortgages, as she said. So, quote, so as ever, the Fed managed to crush Main Street while sustaining the monetary casino that is Wall Street. Why, why on earth should they continue to foot the bill for this monetary malpractice? Um, and she was emphasizing that the uh, Fed's rate hikes were intended to, uh, to bring down or cool the inflation by tightening financial conditions. But the stocks uh, actually surged uh, and perceived credit risks, she says, fell. At the same time, consumers didn't just face sharp increases in cost of food, fuel, housing, and many other goods and services. They also saw the monthly payments due on their credit cards, their car loans, their mortgages, and other debts soar. And we've talked about that repeatedly on this channel. The, the, the uh, consumers uh, did not do well in 2023. Uh, they are, in my opinion, going to do worse in 2024. So it's uh, Pomboy flagged the latest consumer credit data. And we talked about this, I think, in a show, it might have been yesterday, sure, or the day before, about the soaring uh, credit card delinquencies now in this country says she flagged the latest consumer credit data released by the Fed this week as evidence of a deteriorating situation. Deteriorating situation. Total outstanding revolving credit swelled by $19 billion to over $1.3 trillion in November, an 18% rise from a year earlier. 18% rise in revolving credit and a 35% increase from the end of 2020. 
She warned banks could see a spike in loan defaults and more and more people struggling to cover their ballooning debts. There was also a story I think we did, sorry, a plane's going over here. Also a story we did a, a couple weeks ago, maybe it was last week, about the banks, uh, their, their, um, their uh, forecasts are negative uh, because they are planning for uh, more uh, loan defaults and more people to not make good on their obligations to the banks. Uh, so they're, they're, they're anticipating more non-performing loans. And that includes credit card debt, credit card, uh, credit card uh, obligations, just like a loan from the bank. So, um, and she finishes by saying, I wrote this before seeing the, the latest consumer credit numbers showing an eye-popping $19 billion increase in credit card borrowing in November. And she says, I can't wait. I, I shudder to imagine what December's credit card numbers will look like. So uh, with, with that being said, I, um, let's talk about fitness and diet just briefly before I finish, do a little shorter video today. Uh, I did a, a one hour full body workout this morning, uh, did, burned about 750 calories in the hour, then went and had a, a healthy uh, breakfast, uh, something, um, something that put in my body that was good, uh, and, and you know, not loading up on pancakes and syrup and potatoes and all those things that if you, uh, that if you uh, continue to do that, you won't see any results with your workout. So it has to be a, uh, a one-two combination of having a, uh, a, a good workout plan uh, and having a sensible diet. Again, I'm not a nutrition, I'm not a dietitian, uh, nutritionist, excuse me, a dietitian. Uh, I, I'm just telling you that, you know, over the past many, many years, I've taken a different path with regard to exercise and fitness, uh, and it's paid off, but you have to, you have to stick with it. Uh, you have to, um, you know, be consistent. And so again, I know it's repetitive every time, every day on the show we discuss it, but we are as a, as a nation, uh, we are such an unhealthy nation. Uh, the obesity rate with our younger uh, kids and children and youth is, uh, is, is skyrocketing. It's off the charts. You look around, uh, you go to malls, you go to restaurants, uh, and, these, and these young people are just, they're huge. Um, and, uh, and it doesn't seem to be you know, any uh, support uh, for getting these kids on the right path, on the right track. So I know that those aren't the viewers of this channel. Um, I'm just you know, sharing with you, you know, in, in general, we have to start from, from, the, from our youth all the way up through everybody who's even retired. We have to take this seriously, I believe, uh, so we can work on being strong uh, as uh, Americans, being physically fit. We will lead longer and more productive lives. Uh, so I hope you guys are getting your workouts in. If you haven't started, uh, consider starting, getting your steps in, do some walking, um, do some strength training, sit-ups, push-ups. You don't need to pay for a fancy gym membership, guys. Uh, that's not what it's about. Uh, you know, it's about just starting to do something. You can walk in your neighborhood. You can walk, uh, well, if, it, if providing the weather is, is not too severe, like it's been across this country the last few days. But uh, you can, you know, walk in your house. You can buy a very, very inexpensive treadmill. Uh, you know, do some strength training. Please stay hydrated. We're about 13 and a half minutes right now. It's uh, closing down the weekend here. I hope all of you have had a great weekend, shared some good family time, hopefully, and are ready to get back to the work week tomorrow uh, for a productive week. Uh, I look forward to, uh, to touching base tomorrow, and we'll see uh, how the markets open. I saw gold and silver uh, metals markets opened uh, a little while ago about flat. Uh, I don't think cryptos have uh, taken any, uh, take, made any real gains since the sell-off a couple of days ago. Uh, but let's see where this goes this week. Have a great rest of your evening. See you tomorrow. Bye.